never getting off track oh! Oh! Friday, what's good? My energy is not as high as normalmente, but that's just because it's post-dunk day. I feel great. I'm in that post-dunk day bliss, but I am a little wrecked. I pushed my body. My hamstring is fucked. F- hamstring fucked Friday is what today is. It really hurts, but it's just like so tight, so painful. I don't even know what's going on with it. I think the split squat isos are helping. The way I go about healing, welcome to Dunk Life Daily. We're here, we're doing it. You guys know what the deal is. You know what the deal life daily is. The daily life deal is this. We talk about my dunks, we talk about life living, and this is part of it. I like to give my experiences with my injuries because that's the best way I can try to help you with the details of the dunk journey you're on. Get on a dunk journey if you're not on one and you don't believe you can dunk. What the hell, man? Don't you see me as an inspiration? Point is, max out your dunk life just like you do with your life life. My hamstring hurts like a motherfucker since since dunk camp, which was June already. Eight, end of June. We're in mid-July. We're in mid-August. I don't know. Um, but the ISOs for it, what happens is, is like I've tried all these different exercises. It hurts every time. Sometimes I get a little more range of motion. The ISOs, when I do it, it's like a split squat. You, you hold a split and you like hold it in the air, sort of. You've seen me do it on my videos, on my story. Um, when I do it, it instantly feels better. So I think that's helping, but it's not really improving over time. I did jump a ton on it uh, yesterday. So today's really important to like stay on it and go really hard. So today I'll probably hit the sauna. Everything else feels good. I'm just a little like sore. It feels like my muscles kind of got punched a lot, but nothing really hurts. Nothing feels damaged. My knees feel amazing. Ankles are a little sore, but they feel amazing. But if I stretch today while I'm like in this pain mode and get the blood flowing through everything, I think that's really important. Um, and that's kind of what this podcast is about. And today, um, I want to talk about um, phases. So we're on day three of the friggin' phases. Friggin' phases Friday was what today is. And I might spell phases with an F, but that won't be good for my algorithm if people are looking it up. But maybe. I don't know. Sometimes I do things for the joke and it hurts my... my um, yeah, energy's low, man. My cerebro, my brain is a little slow. It's tired. I'm a little tired from it, but I'm not tired. I shouldn't even use that word, but I'm just a little fatigued. Okay, so today's about phases. Day three of my top five dunk tips. These are going to be basic overviews because I want to keep this brief. And also, this is what everybody needs, but you have to start learning about your body. I, I can't give you the details of my strength phase. It won't, it won't work for you because it's so variable. It's so detailed. That's why the trainers out there that are doing specific tailored programs, I think are the best. I think if you follow any program that I've mentioned in the past, I think it'll definitely help you. But next level, like once you do it and you're, you're having trouble, you definitely need to uh, assess your body specifically and work with it. So phases real quick. The three phases I like to go through are a strength phase, power phase, and a speed phase. Now, I, you don't always start with one of them. Um, I talked about in the number one podcast, the how to start training. That's how you know where to start to go. If, you want, if you're at the beginning, you don't know where to start, listen to that one first. Um, also, shout out to everyone supporting me. It's really fun when you guys help me out because I'm really trying to build a really, really tall Ponzi scheme. And if you guys filter into it, dude, it just makes my pyramid big. No, but for real, I really appreciate everybody. I'm getting really great feedback. And also, please go check out my mega vlog from yesterday. I dropped a vlog about my past week of dunking. It was so fun. I'm kind of like an extremist. I kind of like to just like have one giant video because it's hard to just make a lot of videos because it's like starting and stopping. But one big video is like I could put all my energy and I did. And I put tons of editing. I fucked up my coffee making in the morning. (laughs) So I talked about coffee on this podcast. If you want to see me go make that coffee and kind of fuck it up, spoiler alert. Go, go watch that. But it was a good vlog. I got, I got really good um, feedback from my boys already. So I'm really excited that you guys are enjoying that. It was a lot of fun to make. And I had a lot of dunks in there. So it was fun. It was like 20 minutes. So sit down, grab your cup, cup of coffee. By the end of that video, you're going to want to go dunk, I think, hopefully. Um, and leave a comment twice. Go like the button and hit dislike first. And then like, just to like confuse the algorithm. Be like, oh, I don't know what's happening. And then also, don't do that. And then also share it. And also, what else is there? Subscribe if you're not. And then also... What else is there to do? Fucking rate it. Rate the rate the podcast too. Rate it. Thank you. Okay, mega vlog. Go watch it. Thank you. Phases. 
you know, you know how to start to train. So now we're on to phases. When it comes to your strength phase, I think once you max out your window, like I said in the how to start the training, you max out your window, you jump a lot and you're at the top of your window. Now it's time to raise that window. Daniel Back said this best. How long should your strength phase be? There's a podcast on that with him. So if you want to check it out, type in Daniel Back Jump Science and me and you'll find it. Um, one thing he said was just strength phase until you're significantly stronger as an athlete. So for me, it's like, say I'm, say you're squatting 200 pounds, 225 pounds, and you start your phase and you start lifting that, you can lift it a little bit more. Maybe the next week you get 235. By the end of the strength phase, you want to get up to a significantly higher amount, like something you couldn't even lift. So maybe you could lift 225 three times when you started, but now you could lift 275 now. Like you made a, a big increase. It's not just like you went up 10 pounds because the first couple of weeks you're going to make gains because you're starting something new, but you want to get significantly stronger. And that's where the variable variability comes in. It's hard to know when to do it, but a, a general rule of thumb is about six to eight weeks. You want to focus on strength. Now, focus is a key word. Because when you focus on something, you don't want to do it too long and you don't, and you also want to make it your focus, but still have some jumping in there. So for me, for jumping, uh, for strength phases, I like to focus on the strength, use my big energy days, use my max energy for the week on that strength training day. But I still like a little bit of jumping in there or a little bit of the power phase. So strength, power, speed, I like to kind of have a mix of, um, not all of them, but a mix of like tapering off. So strength phase has a tiny bit of power phase. And then when you move from strength phase to power phase, power phase has a little bit of speed phase in it. Does that make sense? So um, the reason for that is because you want to still tell your body what you're doing and you don't want to, like for me, I did a strength phase for too long, only strength. Um, and I, I, my personal body, I, my technique went so, so down that I dug myself a really big hole meaning I strengthened, got super strong, got super blocky, lost like all my athleticism. And actually I didn't do bad, but I just did it at the wrong timing because I did that before a dunk camp. And then when I stopped that strength phase and started working through to get back to the top of my window, it took me a really long time. And I ended up jumping higher than I did before the strength phase. It's just that I timed it wrong. So for example, I think I did a strength phase for like three months before dunk camp. Then I only gave myself like a month to use that strength athletically. And so when dunk this was dunk, dunk camp year one in 2018, uh, when, it, when a month passed, I started jumping better than I did in the middle of the strength phase, but I was still rising. And then like after dunk camp, I kept peaking and kept, and I jumped really high, but the, the, my strength is so long, you know? So you have to know what your timing is. You have to know what your track, your season is like track season or basketball season, know when to do the strength phase because you need the time to come out of it. So it's okay if you do, you do want to focus. I, I think the, another rule of thumb is 80, 20. So start your strength phase, do like one day of power, which is, so we'll move on to, so, okay. Strength phase is squats, deadlifts, anything with legs. Um, I like to do upper body as well, get super strong everywhere. But the point is you want to get strong, focus on slow strength. I had to go through this too. I think I talked to this on another podcast. Slow strength feels like you're going to be creating more slow twitch muscle fibers. But the, um, Daniel Beck again has videos on uh, training. I think it's, what's it called? I forget what it's called. P periodization. I think he has like a four part series. Just look up jump signs, really good videos that the slow strength is still f fast tension. So it's not the same as like endurance running. So you don't have to worry about that. That took that out of my mind. Anyway, you still want to build slow strength, slow squats. I like to keep the reps super low because I didn't want to like build my muscle mass too big. Cause that's another thing I did is different rep ranges can stimulate different muscle recovery and you might build a lot of size. And I don't want to build size because I want to stay lean and compact and just get strength. I don't want size like a bodybuilder. So understanding that is another key as well. So I do that, keep the rep ranges around five, three to five on my strength days and just build significant strength and get stronger. And then next phase is power phase where you do you lower the weight a little bit and up the speed a little bit. So if I was doing squats before, now I might be doing jump squats with lighter weight. So if I was squatting like 315, now I'm trying to get it like, um, I dropped the weight to like 225 and try to go fast and I slowly taper off that as well. So if I did like 250 fast with like fast, faster squats, I'm going to work my way down to like 135 and be jumping with that weight. And then after the power phase or so jump squats is one that I like or speed squats, jump squats, also like weighted, weighted, um, medicine ball throws, um, hang cleans are really good or whatever they're called. The snatches where you lift the bar like this, I'm using both arms and I'm doing like, uh, you know, it almost looks like, uh, lifting my shirt. If you were to like flash your tits, that's how it would look. That's a hang. That's the exercise I'm talking about. Okay. And then lastly is speed phase, which I was always the most fun. Um, 
for me, you start, I just start jumping. I do plyometrics. I do like lateral movements. And I also like medicine ball throws for that too. And the other thing about the speed phase and sprints, sprints are great. And the other thing about the speed phase is you want to even go. So power phase was slow strength power. I mean, strength phase was strength, slow power was a little faster, a little lighter weight. So strength was the heaviest you can do power is medium. And then speed is like a hundred percent speed, but then there's the overclocking, which I like, which is like assisted thing. So it's like you step up a box that's higher than you would if you were to jump. So for example, if I jump 40 inches, I jump off a 50 to 60 inch box and just land or do a depth jump. So that's more than if I was just jumping, it's like overclocking what I could possibly do. The other thing is assisted jump. So I hold onto bands and I jump and I pull myself up. So my body gets a sensation of jumping higher than I could without the bands. Does that make sense? So you're kind of like assisting yourself to go faster and telling your body to exert more. And another one is assisted sprints. It's like, it's, these are kind of hard to do, but I've seen people like have a band around them and a partner and the partner's in front kind of pulling them. So when you sprint, your feet are kind of like going faster than they would if you were just running yourself. It's like assisted things. I call it overclocking. It's the only word that kind of makes sense to me, but think of things to do that. And then there's, you got to kind of have to be intuitive with all these phases. You have to be intuitive, learn about your body and overall, you want to be healthy. So the thing about the strength phase is when I say you jump a little bit, you remember that when you're putting up 315 or you're, you're doing like three reps, even though you're not jumping, it doesn't feel like it. Um, it's a lot of tension or it might hurt your knees, but like for me, it didn't at all. But then jumping on that, like the two days after or the day after is so much load on your knee. So that's what I did wrong last year at the end of last year is I was squatting a lot and then I tried to jump as well. And it was good because I was holding onto my vertical but I didn't realize the day of jumping that I just put so much load on my knees that they were super fatigued and that jumping overdid it and caused my jumper's knee because it was way too much load on my knee. So I know that was a little all over the place. I think that covers it. It's the basic of strength phases. If you need me to do a strength, uh, a phases part two, I could do a phases part four. Let me know because I know that was a little all over the place. Ask your questions that you know I answer everything. Um, why am I logged out of my own YouTube? I'm trying to get to my dunk lifer of the day. Oh, on this day first. Of course, your favorite part, favorite segment. But anyway, yeah, let me know your questions of the phases. I really hope that answers. I know that answered a lot of the questions I normally get. How long should each one be? And like I said, six to eight weeks for each power phase. Again, you should start to feel that weight getting easier. So if you drop it, you like to 225 and you start moving it faster over a couple weeks, it should feel faster. You could even time yourself and get more detailed and you can start jumping with power, like jump squats. That's pretty much it. Keep it simple, but just learn about your body as you go through these things. It takes time. You may not, you'll, you'll make gains. It's just like, I've always made gains, but sometimes I got hurt. Sometimes I got too big and too strong, you know, and it just takes a long time to get back to speed. But for example, if I get too strong and too slow, by the time I get back to the top of my window, that strength is, that strength stays for a long time, but it's just, it took too long. You know, there's, there's a balance. There's a, there's a real balance. And if you need my help, become a Dunk Life member and you'll get my personal training as well. Cause I do that. And my strength phase is out now. If you, if you didn't know. Okay. <laughs> I'm congested as usual today in history, August. Oh, it's not the eighth, right? It's the ninth. Mm-hmm. August 9th. Refresh. Here we go. I've never read this. 48 BC. Caesar's Civil War, Battle of Pharaoh Julius Caesar decisively defeats Pompey at Pharaoh and Pompey flees to I Egypt. Sick. Dude, every day's history, bro. Start your training, become a dunk lifer, make history today. Bro, yesterday was a lot of fun. I didn't jump that great. I had a lot of fun, but my, 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 I feel like I shook the last of my rust off and now it's game dunks. Hopefully play some games this weekend. I can't wait to dunk on somebody. I'm not really that close yet. I got a long way to go. That's another story. 378, Battle of Adrianople. Goth army defeats Roman emperors under Emperor Valens. Okay, I don't know. Anything else? Ooh, 1942, Mahatma Gandhi and 50 others arrested in Bombay after passing of a Quit India motion and campaigned by All India Congress. Huh? Ooh, 1974, Richard Nixon resigns as the President of the United States. Gerald Ford swears the oath. There he goes, the Vice President. Today in film, 1930, Betty fucking Boop debuts in Max Fleischer's animated cartoon Dizzy Dishes. <laughs> Sick. Today in music, 1997, Just to See You Smile, single released by Tim McGraw, who gives a fuck. Today in sport, 1900, first international lawn tennis challenge, Boston, Maryland. Dwight Davis and Holcomb Ward beat Ernest Black and Herbert Roper Barrett, 646464 to give <laughs> an, an assailable 3-0 over British Isles. 
2012 Jamaican Spirit, <laughs> Jamaican Sprint Superstar Usain Bolt wins the 200 meter at the London Olympics in 19.32 to become the first to win 100 200 meter double in back to back Olympics. I love Olympics. I love when there's track sports or basketball sports. It's pretty cool to see that Usain Bolt, boy, that boy, um, he runs really fast. What I think that's today on history is really doing for me is showing you how bad I read. I try to talk too fast. My brain moves more than, faster than my mouth. All right, what's good? Dunk lifer of the day. I might read some comments on my mega vlog. Woo, we're up to, I got a lot of comments. So one on the p- latest vlog, uh, latest podcast first. Oh, my man, Tim. He said, I named the plants from last podcast straight, reversed and straight or dominant and natural. I think I like reversed and straight because... Natural seems like there is a right and wrong way, dominant and natural. I like reversed and straight because um, straight is like you're coming at the rim and reverse. I probably said this on the podcast when I named them too. The point is left, right, and right, left, two foot plants, they don't really have a name. So I think it'd be easier instead of just saying right, left, left, right every time. So reversed and straight I'm going with because reversed is like when you do when you go right, left for me with the right hand, you have to go like against the grain to do reverse spins and it's just like your hands in the back and straight is like you're straight on. You're always dunking in the straight if you're left, right. Anyway, that's really cool. Thanks, Tim, my dude. Um, checking in from Sydney, Australia, says Breno Frost. 11.30 p.m. Listen to the previous episode. Oh, my God. What's good, dude? Thank you for my, my sister's in Australia, by the way. Say what's up. Thanks. Love this series. It's great to see someone explain what they do, but also explain that you need to understand how your body works. Exactly. And now one comment from the mega vlog. Please. Oh, my God. It's tw- I forgot it's 20 minutes long. That's awesome. <laughs> David Kelly, 20 minute vlog with three different dunk days. Is it Christmas? Not yet. Um, Lo- Gregory Saldanha. Love the vlog. Sick intro inspired me to keep with my goal. I'm going to be dunking by next year, even though I'm only at, at the rim right now. Let's go, dunk life. Let's go. Okay. Thank you for everything. If you want to support me, rate, put the, put, put your, oh, is anybody rate anymore? Thank you so much for everything. If you want to support me, all the links are below to support me. I really appreciate everything. Everything's going great. I'm in a fucking blissful mood today because I'm just like, my body's worked. It's all rehab mode. It's so fun to just relax. I know I put in work and I know I'm going to make progress and I'm super pumped to start playing games. I feel like now all about dribble dunks. They're not as where they should be to be able to dunk so easily, but I'm working on my cardio, working on my takeoff, working on my consistency, and of course, just getting higher as much as I can. Maxing out that window. I got to get healthy first. Hamstring, I'll let you know if I figure out what the fuck is going on. Have a great day, and mother effing toodaloo. That's dunk life. Oh, that's the anthem right there. Tried to make an intro, ended up making an anthem. Oh!